Thanks for coming out and watching the oxymoronic Reddit professional show, where I showcase the best and worst of the internet. Here I comment on brilliant and hilarious comment chains regarding dumb shit on the internet for you to enjoy. Make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell button so that you get notifications every time we come up with a new video. Enjoy this week's show. Teachers of Reddit, how easy is it to tell if a kid has a crush on somebody, and what are some entertaining stories surrounding that? Used to be a Calc 1 teaching assistant. This really smart kid kept coming up to the TA sessions because he very obviously had a crush on a girl who would also show up to after hours. They both would be the only two people in the sessions. When they needed homework help, I'd ask them to solve the problems together and come to me if they had any questions, while I pretended to catch up on work but actually played GTA on my laptop. Sometimes I'd overhear them talking and getting to know each other. It was cute. He sure did make my life a heck of a lot easier. Sounds like a win-win to me. My high school teacher would change the seating chart and make your seat next to your crush if you told her. Though her one condition was that she'd keep you seated next to your crush even if you guys broke up or stopped liking each other. Funny times. I have this one teacher that will totally just say anything that's on her mind. Once she just flat out said, do you guys like each other or what to these two kids in my class? Within three days, they were dating and still are. If they get married, she better be in the front frickin' row. I hold a lot of class discussions. Sometimes it's easy because you'll notice kids smile different when their crush is talking. Their entire body will suddenly cue into that person. It's adorable. Incredibly obvious. It's also unfortunately obvious when they have a crush on you. Awkward as frick. I've never purposefully helped my students get closer with their crushes. It's already hard enough to make a seating chart without considering these things. But I don't tease them about it, like some do. I might get a quick convo or note passing slip by if I catch on to what's going on. Oof. Now I feel really bad for the teachers I had crushes on in high school. I'm more than positive my teacher, like, shipped me and my now girlfriend when we were in seventh grade. For some reason, like three weeks into the school year, he moved a few people around and put this girl in front of me, and we started talking pretty fast. Never got mad if we were done with our work and turned around to start talking to each other. Never teased us either. He even rearranged the entire formation of desks a few times and always sat me and her together. We've stayed together through middle school and high school, ten years and counting, and are planning on getting married. Hope you're inviting your teacher. God, if my 8th grade math teacher was on Reddit, she'd tell a story about she had to tell Flynn Lives, Hey moron, stop playing SimCity 2000 for a second and pay attention to the girl sitting next to you who is literally professing her love to you. I was a dumb arse. In your defense, SimCity 2000 was... No, I can't even defend it. I'm a new teacher here, young and stuff, 23, as someone who went through that about 5 years ago. It's pretty obvious. During the training program I was in, we were assigned to teacher and observe and help teach the said class. During classroom discussions, when I let the teacher do his thing, I would just sit and try to figure out who liked who. I was bored. I couldn't have my phone out. This one nerdy kid sat next to this girl, and he was just staring and staring. Funny thing is, groups were getting assigned for like a silly project about evolution, where they would make a poster board at home, exchange phone numbers and stuff. I got to choose the groups. My teacher mentor liked to incorporate me into class discussions and assignments. I purposefully put him and this girl in a group by themselves. Most groups were of three people. Little man, I got you. I think I would have died. Not a teacher, but am former high school student. My teacher was in the middle of assigning new seats row by row, one seat at a time. The cute foreign exchange student got placed right next to me in my current seat. And then she said my name and a new seat and I just yelled out, NO! She asked me if I'd prefer to stay where I was, and I nodded. Total bro move, Mrs. Z. Thank you. Ms. Z is a hero to many. Student here. One of the teachers I had would place people next to each other sometimes if the teacher thought that some people might have a thing for each other. It was always the wrong people, though, and nothing really came of it. Teacher. It's usually easy to notice on students that are more reserved or a little troublemaker. It's amazing how a little crush can turn Johnny Never Talks into a student who raises his hand to answer every question. I currently have one who can be a handful and is not the best at personal hygiene. One day he showed up with a hairbrush and six bottles of Axe body spray, so that put off red flags. Sure enough, at recess, I see him with a girl on the swings. Working with sixth grade, it's fun to watch this new stage and give them crap about crushes. Just don't light a match around him. I'm not a teacher, but when I was in high school, we had this program where if you were a high-performing student, you could help out in teaching grade 1 and grade 6 in the elementary school nearby. 
Anyways, I was teaching grade 6 students some grammar on the board, and I caught on earlier in the year that they loved picking out the names in the sentences I used. There was this really quiet girl in that class that I'm pretty sure 90% of the boys in the grade were in love with. Let's call her Allison. Poor A was seated with boys who lived to serve her, but she was really oblivious to it. One day, I'm creating a paragraph on the board and asking input from this boy about what he wants it to say. Then I say, okay, let's put a girl in that sentence. Who's your girl? I meant give me a random girl name. Except he states loud and clear without a second of hesitation, Allison. The whole class goes quiet. The teacher snickers at her desk, and I try not to double over laughing. Everyone turns around and looks at Allison, who's blushing bright red and flipping papers loudly for no reason. It was so cute. Poor Allison had so many subtle confessions. One time a boy sitting in front of her brought 18 books for her to read because he knew she loved to read. He would lug them around from home to school, back and forth, just so she can read them during quiet time. She thought that he was carrying two books at the most and was switching them out every day, but he didn't do things halfway like that. Not to mention another time an older boy held her hand down in the snow for too long. She came to me holding back tears and asking me to please help with warming her hands. She couldn't feel them. The older boy's younger brother, who was in class, kept hugging her, holding her hand, warming it so gently. Then when she was okay, he ran out of the class and beat up his big brother. I have a whole lot more stories. She just stuck out to me so much because apparently she had been going through that since her second grade year. She was a very smart and capable girl, not really the helpless type, so it bewildered the teachers why the boys put her on such a pedestal. Not a teacher, but looking back on myself in high school, it had to be painfully obvious. She would take my hand and draw on it all class. That was already a red flag. But she also would place my hand all over and give me a feel of everything. As a teenage boy, I didn't mind, but boy was it not subtle at all. Ended up going to two homecomings and prom with her, so Kat was kind of out of the bag after that. Oh man, the longing stares across the room. The almost creepy, wistful what-ifs you can just see in their eyes. When I was in middle school, that was me. It's almost painful how relatable some of these stories are. Didn't realize I was so obvious and oblivious at the same time. It is ridiculously easy to tell at the high school level. They are not even remotely subtle. I'm actually finding at the 7th, 8th grade level it's a little bit more of a challenge because they act so erratically all the time that it's hard to tell what is because of a crush and what is just them being 7th and 8th graders. It's easy to spot with some boys. When their female crush sits next to another boy, they'll loudly taunt them saying, Oh, look who's sitting next to each other. Have you kissed yet? But to be honest, a lot of crushes become obvious because friends come into class and yell at me, X is now dating Y! Always embarrassing for the new couple. Most of the time, my brain then goes, hmm, didn't see that coming, but it makes a lot of sense. Middle schoolers are adorable. I have a story of my one teacher with my personal relationship at the time. So a good friend of mine had a huge crush on me, and so did I back. Now, my one teacher was a complete sweetheart, and she got on extremely well with her students. She also liked getting involved with her students, in a good way. Now, a few months after the friend's first confession, the one day he randomly handed me a note that read, count to 30 and follow me, and he left the class. Now, I freaked out a little bit because I'm a goody two-shoes and never left my class without good reason. So, 30 seconds became two very long minutes. I could see the dude walking outside checking up on me, and I started to notice the class was staring at me. I was, and still kind of am, uh, an extremely shy, but I knew I couldn't leave him there. So I collected myself and asked the teacher if I can go to the ladies' room, and she quite suddenly yelled, Yes, Sophie, please do! So I realized something was up and quickly hurried out the door. The dude had coated the whole school hall in roses, and when I followed him, I found him with a cake that asked, Will you be my girlfriend? This stuff sounds like it came out of an aught chick flick, but it actually happened, which still shakes me to this day. But yeah, apparently the whole class, especially my teacher, were in on it and set the whole thing up. In fact, my teacher was the one who helped set the entire thing. For the rest of my high school life, that confession was like the standard for the rest of the guys in the year. I said yes, and we dated for a few years. Unfortunately, due to personal issues for both of us, the relationship didn't last, but we didn't end on bad terms. I still consider them a good friend. Oh my god, yes, we always know. The most blatant one is when a student came to me talking about how one of the girls in class kept looking at him and he couldn't focus. It's weird, and she looks like a bug. I pulled her aside to ask if she liked him, and she nodded up and down, really fast and excited. I had to talk to her about not staring, and she said she understood. She stopped staring, but started sitting in front of him and twerking in her seat or dropping things and bending over to get them in front of him. They were in sixth grade. We had multiple parent-teacher conferences about it. 
I had a student leave me a note once stating that she liked the boy sitting next to her. He used her for answers in class and ignored her the rest of the time. She was such a sweet girl, it was hard to watch. I really hope she started to be interested in boys worth her time when she entered high school in the following year. Teenagers are so gossipy, they just make obvious jokes and or just tell me, the teacher, who's their friend's crush just to make them feel uncomfortable. It's pretty adorable, especially because it's usually boys and they are so shy about it. I teach K-8 to and some of the older kids will tell me or their friends will tell me. A lot of the 5th grade girls like the middle school boys and they just get all giggly and it's pretty adorable. There's a few of the slightly younger kids who I can tell might end up dating when they're older because of how they bicker. Just watching the dynamics that go on in the school is generally entertaining. I'd imagine it's like watching a show of hyperactive community of monkeys socializing. I work in a fourth grade room with two other teachers, and we had a bit of a bet all year about which of the boys, who had been stuck with the same class of girls since kindergarten, would fall in love with the new girl. We'd constantly point out signs to each other about our favorite contenders. Poor new girl was totally oblivious to all of it. I won in the end. We overheard the boy I was betting on asking her out on the last day. She told him she wasn't ready to date yet. Poor boy. It's always the quiet nerdy ones. I had a huge crush on my history teacher in high school. I'm pretty sure he could tell, too, because I was constantly drawing and painting pictures of him, and I had him pose for a portrait once. Wonder what he thought, lol. At the high school level, it's really simple, actually, for boys, which is surprising because it never seemed that way when I was a teen. You see them doing everything they can to get closer to the young lady and impress her. Chemistry? Hey Mia, I don't know this. Can we be lab partners? Alg I? Oh, I know the answer. Let me reach over you and show you. P.E. Look how hard I can throw the dodgeball. Doesn't my strength impress you? Misk. Hey, it's track preseason. Even though we run totally different events and distances, want to train together after school? If you enjoyed this week's effective way to waste time, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. If you are enjoying the series, leave me a comment below. A special shout out to the content creators. You frickin' rock.